Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find and interpret both the skewness and kurtosis of a variable's distribution. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you could find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. Skewness and kurtosis are two useful measures that we can have that give us a sense of the shape of the distribution of data. There's a few places in SPSS that you can find these variables, but I'm going to show you the one that I use most often. So let's pick a variable in our data set. I'm going to pick this duration in seconds variable right here, which is just how much time someone spent completing the survey. To get a sense of the distribution, we can go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Descriptives. We can put this variable into the variable box. And then under options, we can ask for the kurtosis and the skewness of the distribution. If we click continue and click OK, we get those variables right here. 7.6 for skewness and 107 for kurtosis. That's all well and good, but what do these variables actually mean? Well, the easiest way for me to show you this is to visualize these data and then give a couple of examples of what positive and negative skewness and positive and negative kurtosis look like. So to visualize this, there's a few options. I always like to use the explore tool, analyze descriptives explore. If we take our same variable, put it in the dependent box and under plots, we ask for the histogram. I'll uncheck some of these other ones just so it's not messy. We get a distribution of these data. So this is what our data look like right here. And there's a few things to note. The first is that we have a nice long tail on this side. That tail is our example of a positively skewed distribution. The mass of the distribution is on the left and the tail is on the right, that's positive. If we had the opposite, if the tail was on the other side, we call that a negatively skewed distribution. Kurtosis is actually just a measure of how flat our distribution is. If we just saw a distribution that was relatively flat and then came right back down, that would be an example of a negative kurtosis or a platykurtic distribution. In our case, what we have is a positive kurtosis or a leptokurtic distribution, which basically means we have a lot of tall spikes and a long, 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 long tail. The other option that we have is if we had a zero or close to zero kurtosis, which is what we call a mesokurtic distribution, or one that looks like a normal distribution. To show you this a little bit more cleanly, I'm actually going to use a different data set that I used in my QQPlus video, which I'll link to below. But basically what this is, is going to be a simulated data as opposed to what we're working with here, which is real data from real human responses. Simulated data is useful to make a specific point, and so I'll show you that now. So this data set really only has three variables. It's data that I simulated to either have a right skew, a left skew, or be normally distributed. I didn't mess with kurtosis too much here, but we'll see what that looks like anyway. So if I go back up to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Descriptives, I could take all my variables, and under Options, I'll make sure that I have kurtosis and skewness checked, and we'll see what that looks like. So down here, we see the summary statistics. We see that the skewness and kurtosis more or less line up with what we'd expect for skewed or normally distributed variables. But again, that's a whole lot easier to see if we visualize. So let's go ahead and do that. So under Analyze, Descriptives, Explore, we can take our three variables, put them in the dependent list, and under Plots, we will ask for the histogram. And again, we'll just get rid of some of these other options to keep it a little bit cleaner. I'll also only ask for the plots, mostly just to simplify things. So if I click OK, I see here, this is my right skewed variable. Again, the tail is on the right over here. And if we come back up, and if we come back up, we saw that for our right skewed variable, the skewness is positive, which is what we'd expect. We'll come back to kurtosis in a second. For our left skewed variable, you can see the tail is on the left, the mass is on the right. And again, if we go back up to the skewness, we now see the left skewed variable has a negative skew. And for our normal variable, the last one down here, that's relatively normal. And we saw before that the skewness was close to zero, again, by design. Kurtosis is a little bit trickier to pull apart when we have something that is already skewed because skewed variables by and large are going to have a large positive kurtosis because kurtosis speaks to the flatness. But this isn't flat at all. This is very peaky. It's got a big peak here. Instead, what we can do is imagine that we lop off the top of this distribution right here and have a flat top. That would yield low or no skew at all and actually a negative kurtosis because we have a relatively flat distribution. So these two variables together, the skew and the kurtosis, can give you a general sense of the shape of a distribution, which can be useful in describing it. This is the point in the video where I'd like you to pause and try this yourself. And to do that, I'm going to go right back to our main data set. And let's take a look at a different variable. Let's look at this variable right here, channels subscribed. This is the number of channels that a person indicates they subscribe to on YouTube. So go ahead and figure out what the skewness and the kurtosis is. And in fact, I'd even go a step further and say and visualize this first so you get a sense of what we're talking about. Go ahead and pause the video and give that a try, and I'll do it when I come back. 
So hopefully you've done that and now I will as well. Before I actually get those metrics, I wanna visualize this. So I'm gonna go to Analyze, Descriptives, Explore, and I'm going to remove this variable and instead add Channel Subscribed. My options are all the same, but just as a reminder, under Plots, I selected a Histogram. And I'll actually just select Plots rather than displaying the statistics as well, again, to keep this a little cleaner. So if I click OK, what I find is right away that this variable has a big right skew to it. Right? The mass is on the left, and the tail is on the right. And so what I would expect is a positive skewed variable. It's also very peaky. It's not a very flat distribution, so I expect a high kurtosis. Let's see if that's what we find. Under Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Descriptives, I'll take out this duration variable from before and add channel subscribed. Under Options, I'll make sure I'm selecting kurtosis and skewness, and then I'll go ahead and run that. And as we expected, we found a positive skewness right here, 2.96, as well as a positive kurtosis. Again, kurtosis and skewness, two useful metrics for determining the shape of your distribution. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.